Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Cary Grant and Shirley Temple in The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we welcome back to the Lux Radio Theater a man whom I consider one of America's truly great screen stars, Cary Grant. With Cary is a young lady who long ago captured the heart of America and has held it ever since, Shirley Temple. Together, they bring us RKO's sparkling romantic comedy, The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer, with Cary as the gay man about town and Shirley as the adoring Bobby Soxer. The same delightful performances that made the picture a hit. You know, the Bobby Soxer has introduced some fascinating additions to the American language and mode of dress. But I understand she's still old-fashioned enough to want a lovely Lux complexion. So she takes a lesson from her mother and the screen stars and lets Lux Toilet Soap help out on the beauty front. Now I'd like to have you meet The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer, starring Cary Grant as Richard Nugent and Shirley Temple as Susan, with Frances Robinson as Margaret. Years ago, a sympathetic neighbor described the Turner girls as those poor little lonely orphans. Since then, the neighbors changed their mind. True, the Turner girls are still orphans, but they don't need anybody's sympathy. There's Susan, the Bobby Soxer, 17 years old, editor of the high school paper, and swamped with boyfriends. And then there's Margaret, Margaret, the lady lawyer, who is now Judge Turner, presiding in dignity over the city's municipal court. Right now, the Turner girls are at breakfast. So it's very important that I know, Margaret. Know what? That case in court. The man who ran away with a 16-year-old girl. What kind of a sentence did you give him? Three years. Oh, fine. That cost me two dollars. I well, always bet that you won't sentence people. If you'd spend a little more time on geometry and less... I on... don't consider geometry a part of life. Well, your teacher does. You're the first student he's ever had who defined a triangle as two women crazy over one man. Mr. Roberts is definitely decadent. Uh, Margaret, dear. How much this time? Only two dollars. But no more betting. No, Margaret. And thank you very much. I often wonder why you're so good to me. Well, you know, I die for you. Only sometimes it's very hard living with you. Well, who comes up in court this morning? Oh, nothing very exciting. Some people mixed up in a nightclub brawl. When Tommy Chamberlain phoned me about Are it this morning... Are you going to marry Tommy? After all, he's the assistant district attorney, and I think that... The call of the wild. I gotta go. Who's calling for you this morning? Sounds like Jerry. But you haven't eaten your breakfast. I'll take the $2 out of your purse, Margaret. Bye. <laughs> Mr. Chamberlain, if you'll tell the court just what Richard Nugent did. Well, Your Honor, the police picked him up in the Vampire Nightclub, a riot call. Nugent was at the bottom of all the trouble. Which of you is Richard Nugent? Uh, Mr. Nugent isn't here, Your Honor. I am his attorney. Not here? He, uh, he's out on bail. Well, if Mr. Nugent doesn't show up within the next 60 seconds, I'll issue a bench warrant for his arrest. Meanwhile, I'd like to hear from the witnesses. Your name, Miss... Uh, Miss Agnes Prescott. I'm an entertainer at the Vampire Club. Oh, I have known Mr. Nugent for some time. He's an artist, so he paints lovely pictures. He once painted me. He painted me, too. Well, last night, as Mr. Nugent and I was having a few words at his table, we was accosted by this here <clears throat> lady. A harsh words was exchanged, and Mr. Nugent came to my rescue. I knew him first. You're the one who was buttoned in. Ladies, please. Uh, Your Honor... Yes, Mr. Chamberlain. This is the third occasion in which Richard Nugent has been involved in a public disturbance, and I would suggest Your that... Honor, I see that my client has just arrived. Good morning, Walter. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Agnes. Hi, Lauren. Dickie. Morning, Dick. You're Richard Nugent? Uh, oh, Your Honor? Hmm, I'm frankly and honestly delighted. Oh. Is it all right if we go ahead now? Yeah, I'm terribly sorry, but I... Uh... Yes, Mr. Nugent, this court works on schedule. Nine o'clock means nine o'clock. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, yes, Your Honor. 
You were at the Vampire Club last night. Uh, yes, yes, I was. I I'm doing a series of paintings on Americana, and I'm including a nightclub scene. Creating a nightclub scene would seem more appropriate. Well, how did the fight start? Well, uh, uh, Agnes had finished her spot. Uh, that's a theatrical term, Your Honor. It means her performance, her act. Thank you. <laughs> well, we were having a drink with Florence. Well, and Florence, that's, uh, that's Florence over there. Oh, uh, we've met. Oh, well, she came over to the table. Yeah, and this Cartwright Canary apparently resented my appearance. Well, naturally, my escort was very much I what happened. I prefer to hear Mr. Nugent's version. Ah, mm. uh, thank you. Well, uh, Florence's escort, Joey, appeared. He objected to Florence coming to my table. One thing led to another. Joey slapped Florence, and uh, I slapped Joey. He was only defending American womanhood, Your Honor. Get that, Dame. <clears throat> well, <laughs> uh, anyway, Agnes scratched Florence, and Florence scratched Agnes, and, uh, well, uh, anyone who says he remembers a fight punch for a punch is lying. Uh, I don't remember. Your Honor, the district attorney's office would like this man held over for trial. Oh, I see no reason for that, Mr. Chamberlain. Obviously, it was a fight in which everyone participated... Everyone is equally guilty or innocent. I suggest that you all go home now and be a little less emotional in the future. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, one moment. You just got here. Don't you like our court? Oh, I like it fine, only I'm due to give a lecture this morning. Really? What are you lecturing on? America, as an artist sees it. Just remember, Mr. Nugent, if you're brought before this court again, you won't be dealt with so leniently. Case dismissed. Uh, uh, Your Honor... For heaven's sake, don't press your luck. And telling her you're going to deliver a lecture. But I am. Where? Well, a bunch of kids at the high school. Much obliged, Walter. I wish we didn't have to sit here, Jerry. I hate lectures. Me too. But what about Saturday night? You promised, Susan. Promises are the hollow shells of undone deeds. Oh, for gosh sakes. You're a nice boy, Jerry, but you're callow. Huh. The only reason I'm not good enough for you is because you're looking for a for a knight in shining armor, that's why. I'm competing with some with something medieval on a horse. Oh, don't be a stoop. And please be quiet. Mr. Mitwick's coming out on the stage. The students? Our school is honored in having as guest lecturer a famous artist who will speak to us about the classical traditions of painting. I know you will express your enthusiasm for his appearance here today, and so, uh, without further ado, Mr. Richard Nugent. Uh, this way, Mr. Nugent. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you. <coughs> Oh, I suppose so. For an older man. Uh, Mr. Mitwick, student, thank you. you. You know, a lot of people think of art as something pretty stuffy. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. Don't let them kid you. True art has something to say to everyone. It unites the masses in every age, in every country. And the essence of art is simplicity. Now, for instance, if I wanted to capture the feeling of America today, I'd try to... That's about it, my friends. Just remember that art is a part of freedom, of tolerance, of opportunity. And if I were going to do a portrait of one of you, I'd try to convey all that in it. Thank you. Just, just look at him, Jerry. Oh, you sick or something? Keep quiet. He, he's smiling. Mr. Nugent, Mr. Nugent, my name is Susan Turner. I'm a student here. No. Yes. I I loved your speech. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, nice to have met you, Miss Turner. But I, I have to interview you. Uh, you what? For the high school paper. I'm editor-in-chief. Oh, I'll bet you've had a terribly interesting life. Uh, not very. Look, could we do this some other time? I have a date. A date? Oh, then you're not married. Uh, no. Oh, I knew you weren't. You just couldn't be. Oh, I've had some offers. <laughs> in here, Mr. Newton. Yeah, well, <clears throat> don't you see, We can I... talk in here. Uh, yes, but I... Uh, have you oh, ever well. been married? Uh, no, no. Well, have you ever been in love? Yes, I have. Tell me, what kind of paper does this school run? <laughs> oh, all the students read it. I'll bet they do. <laughs> you probably have no idea what an unusual person you are. Now, I'm not unusual at all, I suppose, but I'm really much older than I look. Uh -huh. And I know what the artistic soul is like And how keenly it can suffer Oh, really? Uh... 
Did you have many ordeals before becoming a success? Uh, no, no. As a matter of fact... It, I want you to think of me not as a newspaper woman, but as a... as a friend. Oh, oh well, in that case, yes, I did suffer. Mm -hmm. When I was ten, my mother and father had a d double suicide pact. They made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was sent to an orphanage. Some days they didn't beat me. Then one night I escaped. I used to steal... What did you steal? Crusts of bread and, and things. <laughs> One day I stole a valise. There were paints and paintbrushes inside, so I began to paint. Yes? But they got me. I was sent to a reform school, but I escaped again. Go on. I fled to New York. A wealthy society matron saw my work, fell in love with me, and sent me to art school. The rest is uh, history. Oh, wonderful. How terribly wonderful. Yes, well, now if you'll excuse me, I, I must rest. Goodbye, Miss Winchell. Turner, Susan Turner. Oh. oh, remember what you told us in assembly about about painting one of us, young America and everything? Uh, yes. Well, do you think I'd make a good model, Mr. Nugent? Oh, you're not thinking of quitting the newspaper game. Well, my family wants me to go into uh -huh. law, but my attitude is that one female judge in the family is enough. Uh, <clears throat> did you say your name's Turner? That's right. My sister's Judge Margaret Turner. Uh huh. Well, nice to have met the family. Goodbye. <laughs> well, what about my posing? Uh, oh, sure, sure. You'd make a good model sometime. Bye now. Like a knight, like a knight striding away in shining armor. <laughs> else did this knight in shining armor have to say? Oh, I don't know, but he's wonderful, Margaret. He's had to lie and cheat and steal to get somewhere in life. Mm, well, that makes everything just dandy. What's the name of this Sir Galahad? Richard. Richard Nugent. Richard Nugent? Well, then you've heard of him. Heard of him? Why, just this morning... Margaret, you... have you ever thought of me as a model? Dickie wants me to pose for him. Well, isn't that not... Dickie? Now, now, don't be unreasonable. He's a very fine man. You don't know him at all. I know enough to advise you to forget all about him. Right now. Well, I don't need your advice. You're going to make me an old maid. Only until you're 18. <laughs> Susan, where are you going? Upstairs. Well, you're, you're going out for dinner, aren't you? Well, Mr. Chamberlain hasn't called for me yet, and, and there's no reason for you to... He's here now, Margaret. Have a good time. Susan, wait. You are all right, aren't you? Oh, I'm fine. Just fine. Good. Well, I'll be home early, dear. We must calm down, Tommy. We'll never find Susan carrying on like no, this. No, 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 Margaret. I'll handle oh. everything. Uh, just when did the cook discover that she wasn't in the house? About an hour after we left. She went to call her for dinner and she wasn't in her room. Did you check the hospital? Yeah, and the airport, railroad station, and bus terminal. Oh, Tom, if anything's happened to Susan, I'll never forgive myself. I never should have quarreled with her. You quarreled with her? I told her she couldn't pose for Richard Nugent. Nugent? And she said she didn't need my advice. That she Nugent, didn't... for heaven's sakes, Margaret, why didn't you mention Nugent before? Give me that phone. Oh, no. Oh, you can't mean that she... Oh, no. <laughs> There's Nugent, Mr. Walters. And believe me, if a client ever needed a lawyer... Oh, all right, Dick. Tell me exactly what happened. Where were you last night when they finally let me use the telephone? Where were you? I had not anticipated you winding up in jail so soon after the last time. Mm. I have a life of my own, you know. Well, let's have the facts. Good. Well, I got home to my apartment last night. That much I know. And this girl was there. At least I think she was there. Well, I guess she was. I don't know. Judge Turner's sister. That's the one. The young one. How young? Too young. <laughs> uh, how did she get in your apartment? He let her in, the elevator boy. She told him she was posing for me. Nugent, why don't you tell me the truth? I am telling you the truth. Now, will you be quiet for a moment? That's what happened last night. Nobody would listen to me. Go on. All right. Thank you. I got home to my apartment. I took off my dinner coat, put on a robe, wanted to be comfortable, came inside, turned on the radio, opened a book... Sat down to read the book, went up, popped this little girl. She'd been asleep on the sofa. Judge Turner's sister, <laughs> go on. Before I can open my mouth, there's a banging on the door. Everybody yelling. Somebody busts in. Everybody starts talking at once. Then about 50 police... Did the girl explain why she was there? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, she tried to explain, but they wouldn't really let her explain. She kept trying to say she'd come up there to be a model or something. Did you Maybe. or did you not invite Judge Turner's sister to be a model? No. Well, in a roundabout way, maybe I did. 
She kept saying I told her I was going to paint her as young America. Did you tell her that? Oh, I told that to 500 little girls. Let's not go into that. Oh, no, no. <clears throat> You're also charged with hitting the assistant district attorney, Mr. Chamberlain. Yeah, I hit him. That's right. But at the time I hit him, I did not know he was the assistant district attorney. <laughs> if I had known he was the assistant district attorney... I would have hit him. He said some very bad things. Wouldn't give me a chance to explain. Kept pulling my arm. And that sister of hers. She was there too, Judge Turner. She's a mountain of ice, a gallon of poison, jumping at conclusions. Now hmm? control yourself, Nugent. You've got to remember coherently exactly what happened. Oh, sure, sure. You coherently. talk like this in front of a jury, you'll get 20 years. Hmm. Well, I'd better get to work. Uh, coherently. Exactly. Coherently. Exactly. You got another visitor, Mr. Nugent. Oh, yeah. This here is Dr. Beamish. I'm the court psychiatrist, Mr. Nugent. Yeah, well, come back in an hour. I'll be crazy by then. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm really here to help you. Now, the only thing you're suffering from is a severe case of being an innocent bystander. Tell me, what can they do to me if I kill a judge? <laughs> I understand how you feel. I'm aware that Judge Turner appears to be a very dominant woman. She happens to be my niece. Your niece? <laughs> fine, fine. Judge Turner is ready for the you, Doctor. Family. Oh, thank you, Melvin. Mm. Well, now you just leave things in my hands, Mr. Nugent. I have a plan. Mm. I dare say you'll be surprised at the results. I dare say. Yes, sir. You just Coherently. wait and see. Exactly. Sir. So I just talked with him, Margaret. He seems like quite a nice fellow. Are you sure you were talking to the right man, Uncle Matt? Well, certainly about six feet, broad shoulders, blue eyes. Mr. Nugent has brown eyes. Oh. Well, it isn't my case. It's Judge Treadwell's. Well, I uh, I hope Treadwell doesn't go too far. Susan's in love with Nugent, or thinks she is. And if they send him to prison on her account... Which is where he belongs. It will martyr him in Susan's eyes. And I guarantee the results will be tragic. Oh, that's absurd. You just don't understand, Susan. She's very level-headed. She's far above that sort of silliness. I'm sorry to bother you, Judge Turner, but this lady claims to be Nugent's mother. Susan! <laughs> Where on earth did you dig up that dress? And that black veil Widow's weeds I just wanted to talk to About him About the steel business, Your Honor She baked him a sponge cake This was in it A hacksaw <laughs> Susan, this is ridiculous I'm in love with him Don't you realize that? If I lose him, life has no meaning I love him Well, Your Honor you win, Uncle Matt. Then I suggest you arrange an informal hearing right away. Well, uh, Judge Treadwell has reviewed the facts, Mr. Nugent. And I have good news. Uh, you're going to hang me? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm the one who ought to be hanged. Oh, well, won't I sit down? Uh, please do. I believe you've met my uncle, Dr. Beamish. Oh, yes, indeed. This is Judge Treadwell. How do you do? And you already know Assistant District Attorney Chamberlain. Uh, nice to see you again, Nugent. Uh, sorry about the misunderstanding. Yeah, forget it. Just a little temper. That's very generous of you. <sighs> I'm afraid I lost my temper, too, last night. I hope you'll pardon me. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> pardon <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Well, I, uh, I guess I'm free to go then, huh? Thank you. Uh, just a moment. Uh, I'm a little worried about Susan. Mm, I was a little worried about her myself. Yes. Well, it seems she's become quite enamored of you, Mr. Nugent, and we were wondering if you'd mind helping us by taking her out. Oh, I'd be glad to. Uh, taking her out? Where? Doing what? Being her beau until she gets over you. Dr. Beamish says she mustn't feel you're being martyred. Oh, he does, does he? Well, then let Dr. Beamish take her out. Let her get over him. <laughs> I'm not a judge, but I'll bet there's no law that says I have to go out with children. No, no. We, we were just hoping you'd want to cooperate. Why should I? Because your attitude will have a decided bearing on the disposition of the other charges against you. If the district attorney wishes to press them. Press what? All I did was punch him in the nose. I... Oh, all right, all right. <clears throat> just what do I have to do? See, Susan, as often as we deem proper, Mr. Nugent. Mm. And as soon as your fatal fascination wears off, you're free to go on your way again. Well, what if it doesn't wear off? Oh, it will. Uh, oh. Uh. Mr. Nugent, I'm doing this against my better judgment. I would just as soon my sister were going out with an actor. Uh, 
Uh -uh. Uh, Judge Turner simply means that uh, I've recommended you as a vital therapeutic measure. Oh, that's great. Recommended for children. Well, Mr. Nugent, yes or no? Well, I still want to know what I've got to do. You'll start tonight. You'll take Susan to the high school basketball game. Me? Take Susan to a high school basket... What, in front of people? <laughs> well, Mr. Nugent? Oh, it's a date. In a few moments, we'll bring you Act Two of The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer. Our guest tonight is Miss Susie Crandall, popular contract player at RKO. I understand your studio regards you as a real trooper, Susie, an actress who puts her best into every role. I consider that a real compliment, Mr. Keeley. It's when you're on location that you learn what trooping means. I'm thinking especially the stars of RKO's new picture, The Big Steel. Oh, yes, Robert Mitchum and Jane Greer. The picture was filmed in Mexico, wasn't it? Yes, in the rugged mountain country between Veracruz and Mexico City. The story is full of thrilling action. It's all about a border gang and the theft of a U.S. Army payroll. That's primitive country down there. All the supplies would have to be brought in. Oh, yes. But the cast got along fine with the natives. They gave them American cigarettes and clothing. Some of the local bells worked in the big steel, you know. And Jane Greer made a big hit with them, all right. Can you guess how, Mr. Kennedy? Well, of course. Jane must have brought along a supply of a certain beauty soap. Right, Mr. Kennedy. She told me the local girls were just entranced with their gifts of Lux Toilet Soap. Why, naturally, Susie. Lux Toilet Soap is a winner wherever it's used. Besides, when they saw Jane's lovely Lux complexion, they had proof of what daily Lux Soap care can do. Yes, and a more beautiful complexion than Jane Greer's I can't imagine. Well, here in Hollywood, we know Lux Soap is a complexion care that works. Thank you, Miss Susie Crandall. Regular care with this fragrant white soap really does make skin softer, smoother. Skin specialists have proved it. In recent tests, three out of four complexions became lovelier in a short time. Why not try this fine product of Lever Brothers Company for your precious complexion? Remember, Lux Toilet Soap is the chosen beauty care of nine out of ten famous screen stars. Now, our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer, starring Cary Grant as Richard Nugent and Shirley Temple as Susan. <laughs> Richard Nugent is innocent as the driven snow, but the fact that he's not in jail is due only to his anguished descent to become Susan's beau until she wearies of him. Susan, of course, knows nothing of this arrangement. Susan's in love. Now more than ever, as she and Mr. Nugent watch the high school basketball game. Oh, good evening, Susan. Good evening. That's Mr. Mitwick, Dickie, the principal. Uh -huh. Geometry getting straightened out, Susan. Oh, yes, Mr. Mitwick. And who's this young man? Oh, I'm just... Uh... Ah, you must be a new boy. Well, we'll probably, probably be running into each other. I gave a lecture here on art. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Miss Beagle's pupil. Uh, excellent teacher. That's an amazing. <laughs> you know, we had a much better team last season. Our new center needs more experience. Oh, at least. His name's Jerry. He used to be a sort of, sort of a boyfriend of mine. What? You mean that fine-looking young man who smiled at you before, number seven? <laughs> oh, but he's just a child. You needn't be so jealous, Richard. Oh, looks like they're taking him out of the game. Oh, but he's a fine figure of a man, Susan. I'd certainly like to meet that number seven. That can be arranged. Hi, Susan. Well, that's a great game you're playing, Mr. Jerry White, Mr. Richard Nugent. How do you do? Usually my game is much better, Mr. Nugent. But lately I got personal troubles. It's too bad that when schools depend on their athletes, that certain athletes are selfishly concerned with their own problems instead of beating PB high. Well, uh, look, Mr. White, how about joining us for a drink? Uh, I mean, for a soda after the game. <laughs> Do you really mean that? Certainly. Giasse. Thanks, Mr. Nugent. See you, Susie. And I thought you were splendid tonight, Jerry. Splendid. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. No, I wasn't. Say, Jerry, aren't you supposed to be in training? Just look at that. A double sweetheart flip. Sometimes a man just doesn't care. Well, I may as well level with you, Mr. Nugent. 
When I saw you tonight, my first instinct was to take a poke at you. Jerry! Then I said to myself, let's be civilized. This is life. And if Susan feels that way, it's all right with me. That's big of you, Jerry. And very generous. Dickie and I will always treasure your friendship. If I can ever do anything for either one of you, all you have to do is call me. Ooh. And if we can ever do anything for you, Jerry, all you have to do is ask. Oh, sure. Get in touch. Call me up. Do you know. <laughs> I, I guess it's goodbye, Jerry. I guess it is. Yeah, I guess it is. Well, so long, old man. <coughs> Must you rush right on home, Richard? I mean, can't we just... Well, as a matter of fact, Susan, I want to talk to you. What about, dear? Uh... Susan, it isn't becoming for you to call me dear. I don't think it's right. But why, darling? Oh. <clears throat> now, stop that and listen to me. Now, the basketball game was fun tonight, but it can't go on. Yes, I know. The season's over next week. No, 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 no. I mean, the whole thing can't go on. Everybody's getting the crazy idea that you're in love with me. I am. Oh. Susan, look at me. Look. I wouldn't say this to many people, but I'm old enough to be your father. You're so right, dear. Well, you've got to realize that this, this, this isn't proper for either of us. You're so right, dear. Well, it's not only going to... Whoop! Point step. Oh, thanks, thanks. Well, it's not only going to embarrass me, but it's going to embarrass you, too. Uh, Susan, you're not paying any attention to me. You're so right, dear. Well, good evening, Mr. Newton. Uh, oh, well, good evening. Well, that's a new dress. Like it? Oh, it's beautiful, Margaret. Too bad you had to go to that dreary party tonight with Mr. Chamberlain. Oh, it was a very nice party. Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, we had a simply sensational time. Well, you'd better turn in now. School tomorrow, you know. Yes, I know. Good night, Dickie. I, I'll just blow you a kiss. Oh, oh, oh thanks, thanks. <laughs> Happy dreams. Hmm. She's still in a daze, isn't she? I don't know why. You know, uh, that is a beautiful dress, and you look wonderful in it. Thank you. You said that gracefully. Perhaps as the result of practice. You said that ungraciously. Perhaps as the result of practice. I had that coming. Uh huh. You got a moment? Yes. You know, Judge Turner, <clears throat> when I was a kid, I had a habit of reading a lot of books my mother didn't want me to read. One day I found a book that had a very racy title. Oh. I kept on reading it for quite a long time. It was awfully dull. And then suddenly I discovered that my mother had stuck a philosophy book underneath that paper cover with the racy title. Well, that's one way of learning philosophy. Yeah. You know what else I learned? Never judge a book by its cover. All is not gold that glitters. Things and people may not be what they appear to be. Like you. I sat in judgment on a series of facts, Mr. Nugent, not on your character or biography. Ah, well, <clears throat> it's still a beautiful dress, and you do look wonderful in it. Mm. Well, we'll see you on Saturday, Mr. Nugent. You're going to take Susan to the picnic. Uh, picnic? The Parent Teachers Association Annual Picnic. <laughs> picnic. <laughs> uh, good night, Your Honor. <laughs> Jerry. Oh, hello, Mr. Nugent. Crying to take Susan to the picnic, huh? Well, yeah, you know how it is, old man. So what are you doing sitting here in your car? I'm not welcome in the house. Well, Susan probably doesn't even know you're out here. She put me here, Mr. Nugent. Oh. Well. It's not her fault, I guess. It's her granduncle, Judge Thaddeus. Have you met him yet? What, another uncle? And a judge? He's <laughs> going with you to the picnic. Oh, he's something fierce. I walked in, all I said was, Mellow greetings, yuki dooky. Well, you almost blew a fuse. <laughs> Well, what's wrong with that? Sounds okay to me. Uh, hey, uh, Jerry, how would you like to use my car? You kidding? Why, no. You drive my car to the picnic and let me borrow yours. Uh, does this thing run? Sure it runs. Oh, where's the key? Who needs a key? Oh, well. <laughs> <coughs> well, here's my key, Jerry. Jiminy. Yeah. I don't look right, do I, Jerry? I mean to be taking a girl like Susan to a picnic. Well, you do look kind of formal, Mr. Nugent. Yeah, well, look, perhaps if I roll up the cuffs on my trousers, huh? Yeah, sure, and take off your tie, Mr. Nugent. Yeah, yeah, and this hat. That oh, is... I'd wear a hat, Mr. Nugent. Only mash it up. Give it the zoot root. Fine. Right. How's this? Sharp as a tack. <laughs> Boy, what a difference. Well, thanks, Jerry. See you at the picnic. Oh, 
Answer the door, Margaret. Who is it? Oh, just Mr. Nugent, Uncle Thaddeus. I'll get it. Who the devil's Mr. Nugent? Oh, he's older. He's come to take Susan to the picnic. Dickie! Hi, Mother Greedy, Yuki Dookie. Ready, folks? Let's go! What the ding dang blasted sort of talk is that? Uh, I don't know. Hey, you remind me of a man. What man? The man with the power. What power? The power of who do? Who do? You do. Do what? Remind me of a man. What man? The man with the power. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Newton. <laughs> Greetings, greetings. Are you out of your mind? Huh? huh? What? What are you trying to do? I, I don't dig you, chick. What are you talking about? What are you, <laughs> what are you two whispering about? Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Thaddeus. Oh, you Richard. Hi, Uncle Matt. You going to the picnic, too? May yes. I present my great uncle, Judge Turner? Oh, well, how do you do, Judge? How do you do? <laughs> That's my hand, not a pump handle. Hey, <laughs> he's sharp. Hey, Uncle Thaddeus, you remind me of a man. What man? The man with the power. What power? The power of hoodoo. Hoodoo? Hoodoo. Do what? You remind me of a man. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't a house, it's a sight show at a circus. Mr. Nugent, Judge Turner is an associate justice of the state Supreme Court. Oh, good for you, Junior. That's better than working for a living, huh? <laughs> what? What? Uh, uh, where's Tommy Chamberlain, Margaret? Uh, isn't Tommy Chamberlain calling for you? Oh, he's meeting us at the picnic, Uncle Matt. Then what's keeping us? Well, everybody ready? My hot rod's right at the curb. Uh, come on, Uncle Thaddeus, come on. <laughs> you remind me of a man. Who do? No, you idiot. I'm supposed to say that. Dickie, your car, it's gone. Why, that's Jerry's car out there. Uh, well, it just looks like Jerry's you car. You mean to say that we're going in that... Uh, why that... not? It's a Voot 8. Voot 8? Yeah, the eight more payments in his mind. <laughs> okay, Uncle Ted, just toss in your friend. Hot food to read it! Picnic, the athletic contests, open to parents and children alike. First event, the sack race. Uh, you know, Uncle Matt, I used to be pretty good at these things when I was a kid. Well, what's the matter now? Beneath your dignity as assistant district attorney? Oh, just too old, Chamberlain. Yeah. Too old? All right, I'll enter the race. That's the kind of spirit we want to see. How about you, Mr. Nugent? Right after lunch? Me? Don't be silly. Oh, too old, huh? To run a sack race? Well, there's nothing to it. You go right in there, Dickie, and show them. All right, Susan, I will. Just hold my coat and hat. And look at him, founded, blowing like a porpoise. You're some athlete, Mr. Nugent. I... It's I... not Dickie's fault. He was just... Tommy Chamberlain happens to be the better man, that's all. Uh, thank you, Margaret. Just because Mr. Chamberlain won the sack race and the potato and spoon race and the three-legged race doesn't prove a thing. Ladies and gentlemen, the main event of the afternoon, the spectacular obstacle race, the supreme test of skill, stamina, and endurance. Oh. Come on, Dickie. Get up off the grass. I can't pin your number on if you're lying down. Oh. Don't you think you've had enough for one day, Mr. Nugent? We've just begun to fight. <sighs> yeah, yeah, we've just begun to fight. Yo, know, Uncle Matt, <laughs> you mind holding all these medals for me? I don't want to be handicapped with any excess weight. Everybody get ready. I just know you can win this time, Dickie. Sure, sure. You've got to win me that cup. Uh, don't worry, Susan. I'll be glad to give you the cup. I'm beginning to worry about him. Him? Nugent? I just hope he wins. Uh, for Susan's sake. Oh. Well, let's walk down to the finish line. Susan, where are you going? I'll be right back. I just want to talk to Jerry. And the winner, the winner of the Grand Award, Mr. Richard Nugent. This way, Mr. Nugent, we'll present the cup of the grandstand. <laughs> Who's going to carry me up there? <laughs> Well, you certainly surprised us, Mr. Newton. Uh, uh, what happened to Chamberlain? I don't know. Strange he should drop out of the race so suddenly. Where's Susan? Oh, well, let's get to the grandstand. Well, Susan, I did what you asked me to do. Well, thanks a lot, Jerry, for letting Dickie win. It wasn't easy, Susan. A few of us tackled Mr. Chamberlain in the creek and held him underwater. <laughs> well, I must say all the boys cooperated just fine. You owe him 75 cents apiece. If it was for anyone but you that had charged a dollar... I'll pay you on Saturday. Well, I don't want any money. Some things just can't be bought. You know, Jerry, at times, you're really very nice. 
me great pleasure to present this beautiful cup to that great athlete and winner of the feature event, Mr. Richard Nugent. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't quite know what happened to me, but I guess I owe it all to uh, clean living, the proper outlook, and the uh, help of my friend. <laughs> no, it's not possible. I'm seeing. Margaret, what in the world? He's wearing armor. Mr. Nugent, he's... He's like a knight in shining armor. Why, Margaret Turner. Well, Margaret, there was quite a picnic. Quite a picnic. Where, Susan? Upstairs. I'm making a rest for a while if she's going to the dance tonight. Dance? Uh, with uh, Mr. Nugent? Well, yes. Uh... Uh, speaking of Mr. Nugent, that was that was a very odd occurrence, Uncle Matt. I mean, there in the grandstand. Seeing Richard Nugent in a suit of shining armor? I feel absolutely ridiculous. Oh, optical illusions have been known. Obviously, to... it was a combination of the heat, too hurried lunch, and all the excitement. Well, of course, it's a known fact. Merely that... a matter of my thinking that I saw Mr. Nugent as Susan sees him. You understand? Oh, same things happened to me a hundred times. Only I always see Betty Grable. Oh. <laughs> well, it it's occurred to me that I. Well, Mr. Nugent has been very sweet about Susan, and I don't think we ought to embarrass him any longer. But what if Susan... Oh, I'm sure she'll get over it. I, I'd like to talk it over with him, as a matter of fact. Well, I think that's... But a... not here. Oh, naturally not here, but... And I... certainly not in his apartment. Oh, no, of course not. Some but... public place. Sophisticated and, uh, well, we could talk things over. Well, that's very sensible, and oh, I... Oh, thank you, Uncle Matt. Your talking to me has cleared things up considerably. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Now, where's the telephone? You've had it in your hand ever since you started. Oh. <laughs> yes, so I have. Hello. Who? Uh, oh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, anything wrong with Susan? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What? You? Well, I'd be delighted. Uh, where we meet? Oh, not at the house, huh? Well, uh, how about here? Uh, oh, no, 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 naturally. <laughs> well, uh, just name the place. We can celebrate my victory this afternoon. No, I'm not too tired to dance. Do you dance? I, I mean, uh, okay, well, uh, how about the TikTok Club? Fine, nine o'clock. Sure, okay. Mm hmm. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few moments, we'll return with the third act of The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer. And now here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins. I hear you have some special news tonight, Libby. It's about Metro Golden Mayor's new Technicolor comedy, Mr. Keeley, Neptune's Daughter. A prize package of laughter, music, and romance. And a cast that does full justice to its clever comedy and catchy tunes. That lovable clown, Red Skelton, is up to his usual tricks, and he's a panic. Yes, and Esther Williams is gorgeous. She swims, she romances, and my, my, Libby, how she can wear those stunning bathing suits. And don't forget that lovely luxe complexion of hers, Mr. Keeley. No wonder making love to Esther comes naturally to handsome Ricardo Montalban. The irrepressible Betty Garrett makes a wonderful partner for Red. All in all, it's a picture worthy of Metro Golden Mayor's 25th anniversary. And Lux Toilet Soap, too, is celebrating its 25th anniversary. Offering Lux Girls Everywhere, a lovely silver scatter pin inspired by Esther Williams. It's called the Neptune's Daughter Scatter Pin, and style conscious women are going to love it. You can bet they are, Libby. The design is beautiful. Charming little mermaid wrought in sterling silver. The pin has a strong safety clasp, too. It's a perfect accessory to wear on suits, dresses, and handbags. Here's how to get your Neptune's Daughter pin. Send in two wrappers from Lux Toilet Soap, regular or bath size, and 35 cents in coin to Lux Toilet Soap, Post Office Box 16, New York 8, New York. Your sterling silver pin will come to you promptly. I'll repeat the address. 
Lux Toilet Soap, Post Office Box 16, New York 8, New York. Send in two Lux Toilet Soap wrappers and 35 cents in coin. If you could buy this pin at retail, it would cost a dollar and a half. This offer is good only in continental United States, Alaska, and Hawaii, and subject to applicable state or local regulations. The offer expires September 1st, 1949. Send for your sterling silver pin soon. Now, our producer, Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on the third act of The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer, starring Cary Grant as Richard Nugent and Shirley Temple as Susan. Well, it's a few hours later, and Judge Margaret Turner, looking entrancingly unlike a head of a municipal court, is dancing with Richard Nugent in the TikTok nightclub. Mr. Nugent is much impressed. You know, uh, my father was a bachelor. Really? Well, wait till I finish. He was a bachelor until way into his 30s. He always said he'd know who he was going to marry the moment he saw her. Then he met my mother, he put his arms around her, and that was it. Just the way she felt in his arms did the trick. Oh, that's a very romantic story. Yeah. Well, they were happy all their lives. Apparently had nothing in common. She was a piano teacher and he was a, a flag decorator. Now, my father courted mother all through high school, college, and law school. Fourteen years after they met, they decided it was time to get married. They had a lot in common. They were both attorneys. You feel nice in my arms. I... I imagine that if mother and father hadn't had so much in common, they needn't have waited 14 years. It could have happened suddenly. Why, why they might even... Uh, <clears throat> oh, oh, hello, Agnes. Now, now, stay right where you are. Uh, you remember Agnes. I do? Yeah. Well, aren't you going to congratulate me? It's my birthday. Well, uh, congratulations. And here's... Joey. How are you, Mr. Nugent? Oh, yeah, Joey. <laughs> sure, the uh, vampire club, the night that Agnes and Florence... Yeah, yeah, and it all winds up with you clipping me on the chin. Uh, hey, your uh, lady friend. Oh, yes, well, this is... Uh... I know you. And now, don't tell me, uh, at Dickie's apartment? No, this is Judge Turner. Oh, of course. You two got to be friends, huh? Well, leave it to Dickie. <laughs> well, uh, happy birthday, Let's go back to the table. Oh, I'm sure you didn't know she was going to be here. Uh-huh. Are you sure you're sure that I didn't know? Oh, I've given up jumping to conclusions, Mr. Newton. Cigar, cigarette. Dickie, baby! Oh, uh, oh hello, Ginger. Uh, uh, no, thanks, no. Uh, no? Well, all right, then. Catch you later, maybe, huh? <laughs> She's a cute kid. I, I did a magazine cover of her once. Very cute. Well, suppose we try the champagne. I hope it's... Susan! I do not intend to create a scene. What are you doing here? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Uh, another chair, Alex. Yes, Mr. Newton. I'm not too young to be deceived by such treachery. Sit down, Susan. What do you have to drink? Lemonade. But I don't intend to stay. Oh, and some, some chocolate ice cream. You told me that Dickie was sick, that he was so exhausted from winning the obstacle race that he just could... She did? Anyway, after you left, I went to Dickie's apartment. The elevator boy told me where he went. I demand an explanation from both of you. Oh, Dickie, Joey wants to buy you and the budget, a uh, judge, a birthday drink on well, him. Well, at the moment, Agnes. It'll only take a minute, just time enough to drink it down. Hey, you, a couple of more chairs. Oh, oh, who's this? I don't believe we're acquainted. Oh, forgive me. This is Miss Susan Turner. Huh? Your daughter, huh, Judge? Uh, <laughs> oh, no, her sister, her older sister. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Margaret's sister. Ah, well, you look enough alike to be mother and daughter. Sisters sometimes look alike, too. I hate my sister. Hey, that's a real cute hat you got on, honey. And I don't intend to take it off. I didn't ask you should take it off. Hey, wait, another round. Well, good evening. Jerry! Oh, hello, Jerry. Glad to see you. I doubt if anyone's glad to see me. You were not invited here, Mr. White. Jerry, I'd like you to meet Agnes and Joey. He's cute. Hi. I suppose you're wondering how I got here. Well, if Susan isn't, I am. It's getting to be quite a party. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you're jumping again. Susan, I went to see you because I just got word I'm being drafted. I went to the house and you were gone. I went to Mr. Nugent's apartment. They told me that... Yeah, we know the rest of it, Jerry. Well, you don't have to make such a big thing about it. After all, 
The war's over. I know it's over. But guns go off by accident sometimes. Fellow could trip on a bayonet. Yeah, well, I know just how you feel, Jerry. Going away, perhaps not seeing your loved ones for, oh, a couple of years. You're a fine boy, Jerry, and a good friend. Perhaps Mr. Nugent doesn't know just how good. Oh, you don't have to tell me anything about Jerry. Maybe I could tell you a few things, like how he made sure this afternoon that you won that race. Well, sir, he what? Hey, hey, the kid's a jockey, Agnes. What'd the horse pay? It really doesn't pay. Hey, Susan, uh, Susan, what are you talking about? You shouldn't have said that, Susan. Well, a woman scorned is a fury. Hey, hey, you drinking, bub? I'll just have an eggnog with two eggs. Now, wait a minute. Now, about this afternoon, just... Hey, what... waiter, bring the boy your eggnog uh, uh, with two eggs. Uh, isn't that amazing? <laughs> Jerry, what did you have to do with my winning that race? Well, gee, Mr. He Nugent, only I... did it because he knew how much I loved you. Susan, I forbid this kind of talk, Good and I said... Good evening, Margaret. Well, life's very complicated. Hello, Tommy. Oh, sit down, Mr. Chamberlain. Do sit down. Well, I, I suppose you're wondering how I got here, Margaret. I went to your house. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you. You went to Margaret's, found that she'd gone. You were suspicious that she'd gone out with me, so you went up to my apartment, the elevator... Hey, bus. who is this guy? No, you don't like him. My name is Chamberlain. Hello. Hello. How do you do? Hey, get him. How do you do? <laughs> of course you know what you're doing, Margaret. It might interest you to know that Do you this... know what you are? You're a regular blackbeard. Bluebeard, dear. Well, a rose by any color still... Oh, now everybody's too excited. No, no, no one's excited. Margaret, I want you to know that only this afternoon, this man told me he is madly in love with Susan. Oh, Dickie, did you, darling? Well, I, I did, yes, but I was only kidding. I don't like your kidding Susan for any reason. You drink your eggnog. Now, look, <laughs> we're in public... And if we must discuss... Dickie, you've got to tell me once and for all. Do you love me? Susan, I think you're a very sweet child, but I can't honestly say that I love you. You no. deceived her. And after she spent $4.50 to make sure you won that race... Well, that's too bad. You can have the cup back. Yep. You mean... You mean that victory of Nugent's was a, a frame-up? I'm going to get out of here. So am I. I've had enough of this and enough of you, Mr. Nugent. Everywhere you go, you attract trouble. If I were so disposed, I could make a lot of trouble for you, my friend. And I'm getting so disposed. You may be a regular guy, Mr. Nugent, but I don't know. I came to this table simply to buy you a birthday drink, and you've ruined my birthday. You've ruined it. Come on, Joey. Let him pay for the drink. I'd punch you right in the nose, Nugent. If I wasn't afraid you'd bust my jaw. <laughs> Mr. Nugent. Now, go on, Alex. Just say it. I just want to say I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Nugent. Would there be anything else? For instance. And I just want you to know, Margaret, that I'm leaving home, my own sister, stealing the man I love. Susan, you're not being fair. The other woman. Susan. It's not like that at all. I'm old enough to fight for my happiness. I saw him first. This is all your fault, Uncle Matt. You deliberately told Susan to come to that nightclub. I certainly did not. It was all my own idea. That's beside the point. Now you're both hysterical. If I want to be hysterical, I can. Susan, I would like to talk to you. I have nothing to say. I will not issue a statement of any kind at this time. Susan, I am still strong enough to take you over my knee and give you the lamb basting I sincerely believe you deserve. You wouldn't dare. Just march to your room. <laughs> Margaret. Come in, dear. Margaret, I've just had a long talk with Uncle Matt. Oh? And I see things much more clearly. After all, Richard is too old for me. Jeepers. When I'm 42, he'll be 60. I see. Well, anyway, Jerry's going to look awfully handsome in his uniform, don't you think? So I've decided to renounce Richard for Jerry. Oh, that's very sensible of you, dear. And now that you have a clear field... I think you ought to patch things up. I've acted very childishly, and I'm sorry. Susan, if I had a million more sisters, I'd want them all exactly like you. <laughs> You're just saying that because I'm so sklonklish. Good night, Margaret. Good night, Susan. You know, in many ways, I think this has made a bigger woman of me. Oh, Susan, apologize, eh? <laughs> well, Margaret, suppose we have a little talk. About emotions. Uncle Matt, I'm not interested in any more of your psychological mumbo-jumbo about emotions. I deal in facts, and the conclusions I draw from the facts are depressing. Well, depressing or not, you're in love with Richard Nugent. Yes, well, I'll discuss that with you in the morning. Good night, Uncle Matt. Good 
Good morning, Mr. Nugent. Hmm? Oh, well, Dr. Beamish, how did you get in here? The door was closed, so I opened it and came in. Well, you can open it again and go right out. You and Margaret are having trouble. None of your business. Oh, you're packing, huh? And airplane tickets. Where are you going? Mm. Africa. Mm, that's pretty far away, isn't it? Now, let's look at the facts. First of all, you're in love with Margaret. Facts. I'm an artist. I deal in emotions, and my emotions tell me to go to Africa. What do your emotions tell you? Well, I've got a plan. Well, I've had enough of your plans and your whole family. I was a carefree fellow before I met up with you. I've, I've been in nothing but trouble ever since. I'm going to be a carefree fellow again. Now, buzz off. Very well. Oh, uh, if you should run across a man named Smedley while you're in Africa, give him my regards, will you? He's a cousin of ours. Hmm. Another judge, another judge, no doubt. Yes, as a matter of fact, he is. Good day, Mr. Nugent. Mm. Beautiful morning, Margaret. Fine flying weather. I can't tell you how delighted I am you're going away for a while. Best thing in the world for you. Turn around, Uncle Matt. I've changed my mind. I want to go home. Oh, but that, that's silly. It's silly that I'm running away. All because of Richard Nugent. Now, look, for the time being, just do what your Uncle Matt tells you. Why? You haven't been doing so good lately. Well, I merely suggested that a little plane oh, trip... Oh, all right. Drive on to the air. Water, sir. Take your baggage. Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, this baggage belongs to Miss Turner. She's at the reservation window picking up a ticket. Miss Turner, yes. Dr. Beamish! Hey, where is she? Where, where's Mark? Oh, hello, Chamberlain. I, uh... I'm looking for her myself. She's leaving? Taking a plane? Yes, I'm afraid she is. Oh, this is all Nugent's fault. If I see him again, he'll get ten years. I've got a bench warrant out for his arrest. Now, if you'll take my advice... I don't advice, want I... your advice. Now, where's Margaret? Well, she should be here. Oh, why don't you watch that side entrance over there, and I'll keep my eyes open here. Oh, very well. Now, just let me know the instant she arrives. Oh, uh, officer... Officer, could I talk to you a moment? Yes, sir. I'm Dr. Beamy, city psychiatrist. Oh, sure. Any trouble, Doc? That fellow pacing up and down at the side entrance there. Him? What's his trouble, Doc? He thinks he's the assistant district attorney. He likes to go around arresting people. Oh, one of those guys, huh? Well, I'll try to handle him, but I wanted you to know, just in case. Don't worry, Doc. I'll be around. Dr. Beamy! Dr. Beamy! Yes, I'm coming. I'm coming. He's here. Nugent's here. I just saw him. He's out there by the planes. Well, come on. Let's get him. I think you're making a big mistake. Oh, no, I'm not. Trying to leave town. Uh, I'll show him. Officer, I want you to arrest someone. Now, you don't want to go around arresting nice people. I... Do you know who you're talking to? I'm the assistant district attorney. Sure you are. Sure. Hey, Dr. Beamish, tell him who I am. Oh, yes, officer. He's the assistant district attorney. Well, ain't that nice. You... You stupid blockhead. Well, I'll do it myself. Beamish, get his number. Uh, yes, I'll get a pencil. I'll be right back. Let's go, bud. Yeah, well, where are you taking me? Let go of me. Dr. Beamish! Passengers for flight seven now boarding at gate two. Passengers for flight seven now boarding at gate two. Name, please. Arthur Ames. Oh, step right aboard, Mr. Ames. Name, please. Nugent. Richard Nugent. Something wrong, Mr. Nugent? Uh, well, there's someone in the plane. Oh, there's several people in the plane. Uh, that's not what I mean. What I mean is... <laughs> Just step aboard, Mr. Nugent. Name, please. Uh, hello? Hello. Well, um... Well, uh... You remind me of a man. Ah, a what man? The man with the power. The what power? The power of hoodoo. Hoodoo? You do. Do what? Remind me of a man. What man? The man with the power. Oh, what power? Give up. Give up? Shall I fasten your safety belt or will you feel safer hanging on to me? Huh? <laughs> Our stars will return in a few moments. And now we want to talk to lovely Esther Williams, who's been listening to the Lux Radio Theater tonight at her home. Hello there, Esther. Hello, Bill. I want to tell you how much I enjoyed tonight's performance, starring Cary Grant and Shirley Temple. It was really delightful. So glad you liked it, Esther. You know, I was interested, too, in what you said about our new Metro-Golden-Mayer picture, Neptune's Daughter, and the sterling silver pin Lux Soap is offering. 
You know, I like that mermaid design so much that I have a bronze plaque in the very same design. I'm going to set it in the front door of our new home. It is a charming pin, Esther. I noticed you were wearing a pair of them the other day on your suit lapel. They certainly look smart. Why, thank you, Bill. I love them, and I wear them all the time. And now perhaps Mr. Kennedy can tell your listeners again how to get this silver anniversary pin. I'll be glad to, Miss Williams. Just send in two wrappers from Lux Toilet Soap, regular or bath size, and 35 cents in coin for each sterling silver Neptune's daughter pin to Lux Toilet Soap, Post Office Box 16, New York 8, New York. That's Lux Toilet Soap, Post Office Box 16, New York 8, New York. This silver anniversary offer is good only in continental United States, Alaska, and Hawaii, and subject to applicable state or local regulations. It expires September 1st, 1949. You're sure to want more than one of these handsome silver pins, so send for yours soon. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. Tonight's play was enjoyed, I know, by all bachelors, all Bobby Soxers, and all the rest of us, too. So here's all our thanks to Cary Grant and Shirley Temple. Gary, when we first tried to reach you about tonight's show, you were in the middle of the Atlantic on a freighter. <laughs> we're certainly glad you made it. Oh, thank you, Bill. So am I. I had a wonderful rest. I suppose after a strenuous picture, you need a rest when you're over 21. Uh, Shirley, remember, you can vote now. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you're pretty bored, Shirley, with people who say, my, how you've grown. Well, after all, I'm a married woman with a little daughter. You know, that's the trouble. Other girls get married. Two days later, everybody's forgotten it, except the groom. Of <laughs> but when Shirley Temple gets married, the whole world feels 20 years older. Well, I think every girl should be married. Ah, every girl should be married. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> yes, you see, Shirley, two weeks from tonight, Carrie will be back with us again, starring with Betsy Drake in their recent hit, Every Girl Should Be Married. Oh, that's wonderful. I love the picture. And I have a suggestion for every girl who thinks she should be married. Every girl should have a Lux complexion. Yes, I recommend a Lux complexion exactly like yours. Why, thank you, Mr. Keeley. I've always used Lux soap. And don't forget you promised me one of those Neptune's daughter's scatter pins. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have two of them to wear on my new suit. Well, it'll be a pleasure, Shirley. <laughs> the Neptune's daughter pin is sterling silver and something every woman will want. <laughs> well, what's next week's play, Bill? Well, it's a drama about Hollywood, Carrie. The famous hit of stage and screen, Merton of the Movies. Starring in it, we'll have the one and only Mickey Rooney. And with Mickey, lovely Arlene Dahl. There'll be laughs, drama, and romance here next Monday with Merton of the Movies. We'll all be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night, and we'll see you in two weeks, Carrie. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Mickey Rooney and Arlene Dahl in Merton of the Movies. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Gary Grant will soon be seen starring in the 20th Century Fox production, I Married a War Bride. Shirley Temple appeared by arrangement with David O. Selznick, producer of Portrait of Jenny, starring Jennifer Jones and Joseph Cotton. Today, we salute America's independent retail grocers who will attend the Golden Jubilee Convention of the National Association of Retail Grocers in Chicago this week. This anniversary meeting marks more than 50 years of efficient, convenient, and courteous service to the American homemaker. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, Reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Merton of the Movies, starring Mickey Rooney and Arlene Dahl. If you have trouble, trouble, trouble with your nice things, change to Lux Flakes, and they will bubble, bubble, bubble your troubles away. Keep dresses looking neater. Keep pretty colors sweeter. Let L-U-X bubble your troubles away. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Merton of the Movies, starring Mickey Rooney and Arlene Dahl. 
Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.